Jane Carter, and today I'm going to help my dad build a goose house. I start the project with the table saw, ripping some 2x4s in half to create the bones of the project. I decide the small end is going to be a 24 by 24 inch square, so I measure and cut the um, pieces to that length. Once I have my 2 foot 2x2s two two cut, I'm going to rough, roughly mark an inch and a half from each end so I know where to pre-drill the holes for my screws. When you're dealing with this smaller lumber, you always want to take the time to pre-drill holes where you're going to screw near the ends of the piece to avoid splitting. Right here I'm using a 5 64th bit. Uh, it's just kind of what I had handy and I thought, you know, that size might work. So here's the frame coming together, putting in the last couple screws. Now once we have that all together, I'm going to go ahead and measure some 30 inch pieces to make the front end or the taller end of the coop and I'm going to go ahead and assemble it the same way. After we have the basic coop assembled, I cover the bottom and the back with the hardware cloth. This will protect the geese from any predators. Alright, at this point I decide I want to add some additional vertical supports, uh, that way if anyone decides to sit on it or lean on it, it'll just have that extra strength. And so I use my level as a straight edge, measure out from each end and mark it. And I'll come in and pre-drill my holes for the uh, board that I'm going to slip in. Do that on top and bottom. Start my screw and go ahead and screw that one in. Go around and screw it in from the bottom. And then repeat for the other side. Now at this point if you wanted to add a roost you could do it right across there like so. As for attaching the metal I just found a scrap piece left over from our home build. Lean it up against the side. It's close to the right side, so I just grab my Sharpie and uh, mark right along the top where the cut needs to be. I grab my earplugs and glasses and go to work with the grinder. Uh, using the cutting wheel here, it does a pretty good job. It's a lot less uh, strenuous than trying to cut it with snippers, but you could use snips if you needed to. And there we go, ready for screws. Here's a little tip I learned this week on YouTube when you're using these sheet metal screws on sheet metal. Put it down, nice and straight, a little bit of pressure, two quick zaps, drive it home. Much easier than just trying to spin it in. Once we had the main frame of the coop built, it was time to start work on the door. The trick to building these doors for the coops is one half inch smaller than your opening. That's top, bottom, and sides. That will give you a um, reasonable quarter inch all the way around. And once it's mounted with the hinges, it'll swing freely. Then we moved on to uh, tacking down our hardware cloth. So uh, this was the end of a roll. It was a little bit you know, tougher to, to straighten out there. So we just manipulated it with the hammer and got it into place. All right, we got our door built for the coop. We got the side metal on. Top metal is cut, but it's not attached to the wood because we want to put the hinges on first. All right, here's our goose house. We got our door. We got our hardware cloth, front and back, bottom. And our little block there to lock up shut. One thing I changed between this and the uh, duck house, it's a very similar design to the duck house, um, is that the lid opens to the back now. Uh, on the duck house I did it the other way, but on this one the lid opens to the back. And that way it doesn't matter if the door is open or shut, you can still raise the lid. And there we go. Thank you for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and go check us out on our other social medias.